I'm Alexis, and you're watching Branch Kids at Home. Hey, Branch Kids. This is Sherry Dingset coming to you from the Vista Ridge campus. We're so excited to start opening our kids' branch again, so be looking for more information about when your age group will open up. This week we're going to be talking about the Helmet of Salvation. But first of all, let's go worship!
the helmet of salvation.
Well, howdy y'all, it's Cowboy Jack alongside my trusty sidekick, Johnny. Hello. We're back in the studio this week. Uh, I've loved seeing all the great uh, job y'all have been doing in the memory verses. It's been really great to see. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna keep talking about the armor of God this week. You know what time it is, Johnny. It's time for them to go get their Bibles. Can you kind of count us down from 10? Sure. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Awesome. All right. This this week we're going to be back in Ephesians, which is, do you know what books of the Bible that's near, Johnny? Uh, the New Testament. It is in the New Testament, absolutely. It's between Galatians and Ephesians. Well, we're in Ephesians, so we're going to be in, in, Phil in Colossians. Philippians, yes. Yes. All right. So open your Bibles to Ephesians, big number six, and then little number ten. And this week, we're going to read until 17a. Now, Johnny, do you remember what a means? I think mean, that's the first. Third. It's the first half of the verse of 17. Oh. All right. Are you ready? Wait. Read along with me. Yeah. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation. What? That is a great Bible verse, Johnny. What do you think? Yep, it's talking about full armor God, basically every single arm piece of it. Yep. All right, Katie, we're sending it to you. My goodness, I just went on the best bike ride ever. I was, hey, what the, where the, where's all these pumpkins coming from? What on earth? There's pumpkins raining from the sky, you guys. It's a good thing that I was wearing my helmet or else those pumpkins would hit me right on the head. Have you ever worn a helmet before? Yeah, when, why were you wearing a helmet? Maybe you were riding a bike or a scooter, or maybe you were playing football or hockey or a sport where you have to wear a helmet because helmets protect our heads. And does anybody know what's inside of our heads? Our brains, our brains are inside of our heads. Our brains are what help us think. They are where we make decisions, where we sometimes pray without talking. Our brains are very important. We know that in the armor of God, our helmets are called the helmet of salvation. These helmets protect our brains and protect the thoughts that we think. Now, whatever you do, do not think about pink sparkly elephants. Don't do it. Don't think about them. Don't think about pink sparkly elephants. Do not do it. What are you guys thinking about right now? Pink sparkly elephants. I can't get the picture out of my brain. It can be really hard sometimes to control what we think. Have you ever been maybe praying or doing homework and you just can't stop thinking about something else? Yeah, I feel that way all the time. Sometimes the thoughts that I think aren't always very nice. Sometimes they're even mean and that can be really dangerous because what we think leads to what we do. So today we're going to talk about how our helmet of salvation can protect us 
from the thoughts that sometimes sneak into our brain. Sometimes we might think one small lie won't hurt anything, but God's word says that we should never ever lie. Sometimes we might think, well, nobody will notice if I take an extra cookie after dinner, but God's word says to respect your parents and listen to them when sometimes they say no. Our thoughts can sometimes not be true. And when we put the helmet of salvation on, we wrap our minds up. We get a big blanket of truth and we wrap our brains in it so that whenever those thoughts sneak in, we're surrounded by God's truth. Now, we have been using the word salvation a lot today. Does anybody know what salvation means? Salvation is the promise that God made to us, that he loves us and that he saves us. Salvation means that even when we mess up, even when we have sometimes not so nice thoughts or when we do not so nice things or when we forget to respect our parents and forget to tell the truth, that God is still going to love us and he's still going to protect us. The enemy will try and trick us into thinking that those things aren't true and we can think whatever we want and do whatever we want. But when we put on the helmet of salvation, we know that what God says is true. And that when those thoughts creep into our mind, we can say, get out of here thoughts. I don't want to think what's not true. I want to think about what God says is true. Such a lovely home. Oh, hey, welcome back friends. It's a new week in the Jameson home, which means that it's a new chance for me to see what kind of trouble I can whip up. With the kids being back in school, there should be plenty of chances for me. Let's go see what kind of opportunities I can find. How's everybody's day? Sasha, any dress code violations? No, but there was a gum chewing incident in the hallway today. Actually, one of my friends was chewing gum in between classes and a teacher caught her and the teacher tried to give her detention. So I politely explained to the teacher that the handbook actually says that you can't chew gum in class, but it doesn't say anything about in the hallway. So my friend didn't get detention. That is riveting, Sasha. Yeah. Um, what about the rest of your friends? How are they? Um, pretty well. I mean, there's a little bit of drama here and there, like always, but overall, everybody is being much more kind to each other. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, there was something that happened today, though, that was really, well, it just made me really sad. Oh no, what happened, Sasha? Well, I was standing in the hallway again with Susie, and um, we were talking about the latest math assignment, and another uh, girl came up to us, and um, right as Susie was telling me that she made a C on the assignment, and she was really embarrassed because it was just a really hard assignment for her because that's not her favorite subject. Math isn't her favorite subject. And so the other girl said, wow, you must be like not smart at all because that was a really easy assignment. That's a pretty mean thing to say to someone. How did Susie feel about it? She was so sad and upset and she was just crying. And so I went over to her and I was trying to comfort her and I told her, you are smart. And then I looked at the other girl and I said, that is very mean. You can't say things like that to other people. That's hurtful and it's not true. And then I took Susie into the bathroom and just, you know, helped her calm down a little bit. Well, it sounds like you were a really good friend today, Sasha. You comforted your friend and you stood up to the other girl. And I think that's a really good way to show Jesus to both of them. Thanks, Mom. But I just really hate when other people are mean to other people. You know, I hate that. Anyway, Spence, how was your day? Oh, my day was awesome. So at recess today, we, me and the guys, we warmed up with some double J's and then we hit the court for some Hulk basketball. Wait, Hulk basketball, what's that? It's like, you know, basketball, you've heard of it. And it's like that, but yeah. it, when you make a goal, you hulk out on everybody on the court. It's awesome. Uh, I, 
I might regret asking this, but could you demonstrate Hulk out for us? <laughs> I would be happy to. Hulk smash! Ah! Ah! Hulk smash! <laughs> okay, that seems like it is a lot of fun for sure. Uh, what about class? How was class today? Oh, class was good too, Dad. I got the oil baron assignment back, and I got an A, and my teacher said that she really liked the air horn sound effect. Well, good for you, Spence. That's great to hear, and an A is good. Congratulations. But what about lunch? I know that it was Nugget Day, your favorite lunch day. Oh, Dad, you know I love those sweet, sweet nuggets. Yes, it was Nugget Day, and the cafeteria lady, Miss Debbie, she knows how much I love sweet nugs, and so she gave me an extra one. And I went back to my seat, and there's this new kid named Charles that sits by me, so I met him today. Oh, Charles, what's he like? Do you think that you'll be friends? Yeah, I think so, but Charles was having kind of a rough day because he was telling me about how both of his parents have lost their job, and they haven't been able to pay rent for like several months, and the, the last three days, all he's had for lunch is one granola bar. Mm. I can eat like 12 granola bars. How did you respond to him? I, I just said, look, man, that really stinks. I hate that. That's terrible. But then the more I was kind of sitting there thinking about it, I felt really bad. And so I had an idea and I asked um, if I could be excused from the table. Um, so I went up to Miss Debbie, the lunch lady, and I, I asked her if I could use my allowance to buy some nuggets for Charles. And she said I could, so I bought him some nuggets. And we sat there and we talked about uh, the Avengers. And I think that we're gonna be friends even though he thinks that Captain America is better than Iron Man. Yeah. Obviously, I've got some things to teach him. Yeah, that's awesome. But what about your allowance? I, I know that you've been saving for the new Transformers game. You'll have to save for a few more weeks now. Yeah, you know, I thought about that too. But then, I mean, honestly, I just thought about how good God has been to me. And then I also thought about how I would feel if I didn't have sweet nugs. And so I thought, I got to do it, man. And, and I'll, I'll wait a few more weeks. That's really awesome, Spencer. It sounds like you're doing just what Jesus would have done. Lucy, what about you? How was your day? Wow. Did you hear those amazing things Spencer and Sasha did for people today? They were just like Jesus. Good luck comparing to them. It looks like you're going to be a pretty big disappointment to your parents. Well, you must be feeling like a pretty bad Christian right about now. I mean, all you did was go to school and get through the day. You didn't really think about anyone else but yourself all day. Come to think of it, it's probably not just your parents who will be disappointed in you. I bet God isn't too happy either. You're going to have to work twice as hard to earn it back tomorrow if you're going to rack up enough points to even make it close to comparing with your brother and sister. Good luck with that. It was fine. Um, fine? That's it? Don't you have more to say? Well, I mean, I didn't feed the hungry or comfort the hurting or stand up to a bully if that's what you mean. I guess I'm not one of Jesus' favorites like Spencer and Sasha. Whoa, Lucy. Sure, Spencer and Sasha did some really kind things today, but why do you think that makes them Jesus' favorite? Well, because that's what we have to do to be good Christians, right? Well, I, I think I see where this is going, and it actually is a good transition for us into the next piece of the armor of God, the helmet of salvation. You know, I used to think that I had to do a lot of good things in order to earn God's love. Doesn't it feel that way sometimes? Well, yeah, especially with Pastor Spencer and St. Sasha over here. Feels like everybody's on the Golden Street to Jesus Town. Well, it's interesting that you put it that way, Lucy. Do you think that God just has a big book of good and bad and you just have to do enough good stuff to make the cut above everybody else? Well, I don't know. I haven't really thought much about it, but I guess that makes sense. And I think that makes sense to a lot of people, Christians included. People think that they have to earn their way to be loved by God. And sometimes I still get caught up in that same trap. And I have to remind myself of what the gospel really is. Well, I guess I've forgotten the good news too. You mean God isn't keeping track of all of the good and bad things that I've done so that he can roll it out after we die? It's quite the opposite of that. Jesus isn't keeping track of the things that we can do because he knows that we could never earn our own salvation. 
But Jesus' life and sacrifice was for the forgiveness of our sins. So that now when God looks at us, he only sees Jesus. So that's like when we have the helmet of salvation to protect our minds um, from the enemy trying to convince us that we have to be good enough to um, be loved by Jesus. That's right. Do you remember last year when you were baptized, what you said during your ceremony at the church? Yeah, well, I said that I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died for my sins and that He rose again. And then I said that I wanted to give my life to Him. Yes, exactly. That day you put on the helmet of salvation. And because of that, your future is secure in Jesus. You see, that's why we do good things. Because Jesus has already given us our salvation and we're so grateful. Not because we have to do good things to earn our salvation. Wow, that is really good news. I'm into that. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for life today. Well, that was frustrating. If I can't get them to doubt their salvation, then this is going to be a really difficult task to get them to behave poorly and separate themselves from Jesus. But don't count me out just yet. I'll have better luck next week, I'm sure of it. I'm getting excited just thinking about taking another shot. Like I always say, I'm very good at my job. So goodbye for now, Jameson family. I'll be seeing you again soon. What's going on, everybody? It's time for Weekly Challenge. Oh, sorry. Weekly Challenge, here we go, let's check it out. We're gonna read it. We're gonna read Ephesians 6. 10 to 17 a just the first part of 17 uh, number two is make it make a helmet of salvation to add your collection hopefully your armor's looking pretty really good by now you got a lot going on in that armor keep adding to it each week uh, then do it make motions memorize it somehow so you can remember all the pieces of this armor and then lastly share it pick someone or something or some way that you can just share what you've learned about the helmet of salvation that's your weekly challenge Let's pray. Hey guys, welcome back. It's Cooper and today we're gonna pray again. When I pray, I like to fold my hands, bow my head, and close my eyes. That's how I was taught. But remember, God can hear your prayers no matter the time of day and no matter where you are, he can hear you. I like to pray because I wanna talk to God and ask him things and tell him thank you for things. Now today, we're gonna pray together. So I want everybody to repeat after me and bow your heads, close your eyes, and fold your hands together. God, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross and save me from my sins. Protect my mind from bad thoughts, sights, and sounds. Help me only believe your truth and put all my hope in you. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Hi again. I hope you enjoyed the story and learned a lot more about the helmet of salvation. I want to encourage you as you go on this week to make sure you have all of the pieces of your armor on so that you're fully equipped to do God's work. Go in peace. Oh, 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 oh,